How you doing, Binghamton? I'm Dan Conti, the number one Dallas Cowboy fan in the universe, getting you ready for week five of the NFL. I'm flying solo this week because he's all went home for the four-day weekend this past weekend. And as a result, I am here by myself, doing the show by myself. But that's okay because I got plenty to say. And that rhymes, doesn't it? A lot of interesting things happened this week in the NFL. But uh, as we take a look, the first quarter of the season is already over. And uh, things are pretty much how they should be. Only two teams in the NFL stand at 4-0. and And... Uh, we pretty much figured that two teams would be. Of course, one of those teams is the Dallas Cowboys, standing atop the NFC East all by themselves at 4-0. As are their counterparts in the NFC West. They also are sitting on top at 4-0. Too bad that team is the St. Louis Rams. <laughs> the 49ers went down to the Detroit Lions on Monday night. And now they're not even in first place. They're down at 3-1. As Detroit wins on Monday night, Doug Bryan going doink at the end of the game, giving the Lions a three-point victory. And, I mean, you know, I complained about the 49ers last week, you know, saying how they were going to blow out Detroit and that it wasn't even going to – I shouldn't even watch the game. But you know what? I watched the game, and I became more interested in the game as the 49er defense was exposed by the pinpoint passing of Scott Mitchell and the beauty receiving done by Herman Moore. Uh, the Detroit Lions, who caught the uh, well, a couple of touchdowns. Well, he caught a touchdown pass and got a two-point conversion, which turned out to be real huge. But the 49ers went down, and you know, yeah, you can say they lost by three, but you know, hey, it's a sign of things to come. And if you don't believe me, you can just look at last year when Detroit beat Dallas on Monday Night Football early in the season, and we know what happened last year. But we don't want to talk about that because it's 1995 now. And you Niner fans are coming out of your little fantasy world, uh, courtesy of the Detroit Lions. So, <clears throat> excuse me while I kiss the sky. But right now, Dallas is 4-0 with the St. Louis Rams, the only undefeated teams left in the NFC. And uh, they're going to pull away from the pack. They'll probably clinch the NFC East in a couple weeks. But uh, why don't we talk about this week anyway and start off with the Cowboys. We're playing the Washington Redskins at RFK. This used to be a big rivalry back in the day. I mean, I can remember as, as a young boy growing up in the uh, mid-'80s, Cowboys and Redskins would be on television, and, and it would hurt to watch because the Redskins would always beat the Cowboys, and a lot of people would always beat the Cowboys back then. But uh, it's sad to say now, you know, life is one big cycle and it, it runs in circles baby and right now the Cowboys are on top of the game they're on top of the NFL and uh, this rivalry with the Redskins no longer exists because the Redskins are horrible they are they are in second place they are tied for second with the other three sad teams in that division at one and three but uh, it's not gonna be much of a contest here uh, I don't know well, maybe they'll make, no, nah, they won't make a game of it. I'm, I'm, I was trying to think about it for a second, and uh, they, the Redskins won't make a game of this because um, they're horrible, quite frankly. I mean, they, they scored six points at Tampa Bay last weekend, and you can't beat the Buccaneers. You got big problems. But I remember back in the day when this was the big rivalry. Remember back a couple years ago, the Redskins were 11-0. and can't believe that happened. Dallas went in there in week 12 and took them out for their first loss of the season. Their only real loss of that year, anyway. Philadelphia beat them at the end of the year, but uh, they kind of conceded that game. But the rivalry has since, uh, since dissipated over the departure of the big-time Redskins stars. Yeah, there's a new leaf in Washington, and uh, it doesn't smell too good right now. But Dallas is going to win. They'll be 5-0. and When that game's over, and uh, why don't we move on. New England's playing at Atlanta. This is an interesting game because um, the Patriots are horrible and the Falcons, even though they're 3-1, and one, are, are horrible also. The Niners destroyed them a couple weeks ago and uh, they can only manage 13 points against the Jets. The Jets are horrible. They're disgusting. But I don't even want to. Well, I have to. Actually, I have to talk about them later this, in the uh, show because Crazy Jets fan is off this week. He... Uh, in his, in, in his never-ending pursuit to uh, pursue other interests. Uh, he had a gig this weekend uh, down in Nyack, uh, Nyack, New York, that is, not the Hillside building. But uh, he'll be back next week with his little jet picks. But i got to talk about them later 
in the show. So um, I'm real disappointed. I got a cold too, so let me cough for you. <coughs> oh, I feel much better. But anyway, Patriots at the Falcons this week. Uh, interesting. Drew Bledsoe, uh, not impressive this year. Uh, they've turned the ball over a lot, the Patriots. Uh, they didn't look too hot against Miami and San Francisco. They, uh, they need to get gear, and, and um, against Atlanta, they might actually do it. But uh, I'm going to root for the Falcons in this game because that will put them up 4-1 and one and put the heat on the 49ers. You know, even though the, you know, the Falcons and Rams you know, may not compare to the Niners, it's nice to see these teams up there, and it's nice to know that the Niners got to sweat it out, and that makes me real happy. So go Falcons this week, and hopefully they'll push it up to 4-1. and one. But anyway, Miami's at Cincinnati also this week. Miami's the only other undefeated team left in the NFL. They're at 3-0. and They were off last week. But uh, they'll probably uh, stay undefeated against the Bengals, who, uh, who couldn't even beat the Oilers last week. I mean, a lot of people got excited because they were 2-1 and one after the first three weeks. And, you know, they've been horrible the last few years. But then they go in and they lose at home to the Oilers who were just as bad. And now that AFC Central looks real interesting with Pittsburgh, Houston, and Cincinnati all at 2-2. Two two. But uh, we'll see what happens this week. It's father versus son again as uh, uh, Dave goes against father Don. Not going to be much of a contest, although it would be real interesting if it was. But um, I don't know. My Miami, a lot of people say Miami's going to go to the Super Bowl. I happen to disagree with you people because I think Cleveland's going to go, and Cleveland's starting to assert itself, as we saw last week, they spanking the Chiefs around 35-17. You know, they're all of a sudden, they're 3-1, and one, and they got the uh, second best record in the AFC. And once the Dolphins falter, there's going to be a real problem, and I just don't see Miami going into the dog pound in a playoff game in late January and winning. And that's why I like the Browns to go to the Super Bowl. But Miami's going to win this week, and um, that's all I got to say on that one. Game I usually don't talk about, Tampa Bay at Carolina. Well, let's see. The Buccaneers are 2-2. Two two. Panthers have yet to win. Well, they're an expansion team. They probably look at the game on this schedule and say, you know, we could probably win this game. We'll probably get our first W by then. But I don't know about that. I mean, Tampa Bay, I'd, you know, this is a game actually I'd like to watch because it's fun to watch the little teams battle it out, you know, when you're a Cowboy fan. It's fun to watch these, these other teams that never do good, you know, square off. And if Tampa can win, hey, they'll be 3-2 and two in that black and blue NFC Central division. And uh, if you give you 9-7 is good enough to win that division. So uh, if Tampa Bay can, you know, get these cheap wins in, which sometimes they forget to do, then uh, that could make things real interesting. But it would also be nice to see Carolina get a win finally. I mean, they haven't played well, really. The only uh, real, well, they played well the first week against the Falcons. And then they played good that first half against Buffalo. But then they've gone downhill since. But they've had the week off. So they've had a week off to think about it. So um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. It'll be an interesting game. And uh, you know, since I'm all by myself this week, you know, we're, uh, we're going to have some celebrity analysts come on and uh, you know, try to help us out with uh, picking some of the games. Uh, one of our, our celebrities this week is going to be uh, Yoda, Jedi Master. Yoda. Why don't you uh, give us a take on uh, Tampa Bay at Carolina? What do you think? Difficult to see. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Yoda. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, we got some more games to talk about here. Philadelphia at New Orleans. Something's going wrong with the Eagles, people. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you've been watching. A couple weeks ago, they were up 14 nothing against the San Diego Chargers. And all of a sudden, it was 27-14 San, San Diego, and they held on to win 27-21. Last week, the Eagles go up 17-0 on the Eagles, and if you went outside for a couple hours, you came back, you saw that score was 48-17 Oakland, and you're going, Jesus, what the hell just happened here? The Eagles got to get in gear, people, and I don't know. Well, actually, this is a chance to do it against New Orleans, the only team besides an expansion team that hasn't won yet. They're 0-4 after losing to the Giants in a real barn burner. But uh, Philly at New Orleans, uh, not a really interesting game. I'd rely on crazy Jets fan this week, but as we know, I'm all by myself. So I'll just have to say that uh, 
The Eagles go in and beat the Saints. Saints go to 0-5, uh, reminiscent of the old Saints who couldn't win their first 20 years of existence. And to bring out the paper bags down in New Orleans because the Saints are horrible this year. Even though they've lost some close games, they're going down the toilet. The next game I'd love to talk about because if, if you don't love this story this year in the NFL and you're, you're just not – you're just a cold person. You just you just have nothing in here, man. You got nothing in here. And I'm talking about the St. Louis Rams at the Indianapolis Colts. The Rams are 4-0 and they're challenging Dallas for home field advantage. You got to love that though. When the Rams are all by themselves back in the NFC. This is back in the this is way back in the day when the Cowboys and the Rams were the best teams in the NFC some some 20 25 years ago. You know, and then they would take turns going in the NFC title game. So it's nice to see the Rams back, and it's nice to see them up at 4-0 in this fantasy season of theirs.